Hello everyone, I'm sitting on the, well, I'm on the floor, but on my chair up against the bed. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, this looks weird. But anyway, last month I was going to do a video, actually no, last month I filmed um, part one of two videos I was going to do about the Sight and Sound 2022 poll, and I was just going to like combine them together. And I decided to scrap that because a lot of things changed since then. And I also, I still want to make that video, but in it I talked about how I felt a little bit, and also Peter Bogdanovich, how he felt about it in 2012, and since then he passed away yesterday, so I'll talk about him more when I do that sight and sound video, but um, so today I'm going to show my Criterion Collection. I'm only going to show the ones that are, that I own once, because I have a lot of duplicates that are opened, but then I have a lot that aren't duplicates that are opened as well, but then I have all the ones in the cases, so I just wanted to show this book, great book, it came out couple of months back? A month or two back? I don't really remember. But it's great. And it's wonderful. And there he is. Rest in peace. Best film professor I ever had. I wish you could have met him. I had a forward by Peter Bacon. So anyway, this book is great. So also, <coughs> I wrote down all of the films that I have opened up that I don't have extra copies. Like, no sealed copies of. So, M, Trouble in Paradise, Lady Vanishes, Thief of Baghdad, Fortnite Parallel. Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, Canterbury Tale, and <coughs> Know Where I'm Going, The Kill. I'm going to fuck through this whole video. Nightmare Alley, Hobson Choice, Ace in the Hole, Night of the Hunter, Written on the Wind, La Dolce Vita, Eight and a Half, The Brows of Cherbourg, Bella de Shore, Repulsion, Rosemary's Baby, Harold and Moore, Fantastic Planet, and Mahan Drive. So those are all opened up. So 23 criterions that are open. Anyway, well, I guess I could have waited on this video when I wasn't feeling like shit, but... Whatever. Um, alright, so I guess we'll start going through the Criterions. I guess I'll show- mm, I'll save these for last, I guess. Alright, so let's just start with these. I kind of want to put them back on the shelf in the order that they were in. So we'll kind of have to figure this out. But anyway, Stagecoach. I love Stagecoach. Great movie. John Ford film. I own a couple of John Ford films. So that's Stagecoach. Make Way for Tomorrow. My favorite director, Leo McCary. This is, you know, one of those unique films. One of the most unique films you'll ever see. A film about people. About old age. Only a couple of films, really. About old age. Wonderful, fucking, it's a wonderful film. I don't curse through this whole thing. Lubitsch's Heaven Can Wait. Now, my collection is focused. I took down the other film videos that I had. So, when I do film videos on this channel, which I, I want to start back up again, they're going to be heavily focused on the golden age of... American cinema, with also some foreign stuff as well. Notorious. This was one I waited so long. I mean, when they when they announced this one, I was so happy because it was in the um, in the collection, but it didn't have a Blu-ray upgrade. And this is, I think, my third favorite Hitchcock movie. It's definitely in my top five. We just need a shadow of a doubt. I know now they're doing 4K shadow of a doubt, so I'm probably never going to get that on Criterion. Surge's Sullivan's Travels. It's a really good movie. Oh, love My Man Godfrey with William Powell and Carol Lombard. That's another great one. The classic, The Lady Eve. This is just, if I had to rank my favorite all-time criterions, this is just so up. I waited so long for this fucking thing. So long. I love this movie. This is, I think this is a really good uh, cover for it. I know some people didn't like it. I like it. I like the colors a lot. Really good. The Blob. You know, I have a fondness for some of these ones from the 50s. I'm not the biggest genre movie fan, like horror and sci-fi and action. It's just really not my thing anymore. It's very limited to the ones I really love. But I like The Blob enough. I think it's pretty good. But there's a charm to it. Oh, and Charade. I love Charade. This is a great movie. Really great. And, of course, my homie. My boy. Cary Grant. And Audrey Hepburn's good in it, too, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Audrey Hepburn. All right, where should we go now? Because we'll go over here. I want to kind of keep these in stacks so that I can remember. I can put them on the, sh <coughs> the shelf easier. It Happened One Night. Classic film. I just watched this again recently. Just wonderful. Wonderful stuff, Frank Capra. Pretty much all of these movies that I own. Maybe it's not some of the ones I read on this list, but most all the criterions I own are movies that I love or like a lot. I Married a Witch. Like, I like this one a lot. This is a good movie. With uh, Veronica Lake from Sullivan's Travels. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is probably my favorite courtroom film ever made. 
Auto Preventure's Anatomy of a Murder. This is actually one I remember that I have two of. I had to have it sealed, or the case for it anyway, because I opened up the other one. It's just a great film. Another court. Wait, why are these? Are these really spine numbers right next to it? Yeah, I guess, from what I own, yeah. 12 Angry Men. This, of course, is the most famous one. Not my favorite, but probably this is probably right behind uh, Witness for the Prosecution, and then, of course, Anatomy of a Murder. I have to still see a couple of other classic ones, like Judgment at Nuremberg, and we'll see where that ranks, but I'm actually a pretty big fan of courtroom films. I never thought in my life I would be, but they're great movies. If it's a great movie, I'll pretty much, you know, I'll watch anything, really. Oh, I, I do love this one. When I said I wasn't a horror fan, that doesn't apply to, like, the, this era. I, I don't know. I still, like, I love the 30s, 20s and 30s horror movies. They just were so atmospheric and creepy, and if they had a good story um, or a good central performance, I could definitely get behind them. I could. Because the, the characters in them are usually boring as shit. You know, you're really going in for the atmosphere and stuff. And then, like, a Baby Jane, where, like, the main character is, is pretty freaking great. But Island of Lost Souls is great, and um, Charles Lawton is really the main reason to see it. I think he holds the picture up enough for it to really work. The Killing, I have not seen this, but it is Stanley Kubrick. Of course, it's one I want to see, so I bought it. So I can't really say that's, you know, my favorite's quite yet. I'll have to watch it and see. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I think is Sterling Hayden in this movie... Yes, he is. And, of course, he's in something else that we'll talk about in a little while that I, I fucking love. Oh, right here. What a shock. He's in this. This is one of my favorite movies. The Asphalt Jungle. This is a crime film by uh, John Huston, who I love. I love every John Huston movie I think I've seen, so. I definitely am more of a director. It's tough with these movies. I don't know. I mean, old classic Hollywood had so many great talents, and they could elevate so many things. I don't know if I would say I'm more director-oriented or, or actor and actress-oriented. I'm not sure. There's definitely a couple of actors and actresses that I fucking adore, but... I don't know. Having, like, the filmmaker's body of work is always fascinating to me. Which is kind of sad, because nowadays I don't think people even give a shit about directors anymore, which is really unfortunate. How's this gonna go? Yeah, okay. We're doing this right. Anyway, Cat People. Jacques Tonor, another one of my favorite filmmakers. He did Out of the Past, which is phenomenal. And this is a really good movie, too, Cat People. Not as good as Out of the Past, but I, I like it a lot. It's it's unique. Here comes Mr. Jordan. I do like this one a lot, too. With Claude Rains. That's a good movie. Great performance in this one by James Gleason, who's an old character actor. He's fucking... He should have won the Academy Award, I think, for this one. I don't think he's on the back, but he's just so fucking good in this. I love his character. James Gleason was... A good character actor, and this was his signature role, as far as I'm concerned. In a Lonely Place, this is my second copy. I own an open copy of this. Um, this was the first Criterion I ever owned. This film on Criterion, obviously the opened one, but is the first film I ever got on the Criterion collection. I saw it. I said, this is fucking phenomenal. I have to get this movie, and I think I want to show it to my mom or something. I was like, you have to fucking watch this. Uh, this is probably Bogart's best film. I don't... That or the Maltese Falcon. I love the Maltese Falcon. I don't know. You gotta love the ones he did with Houston. But this is probably his best performance, I would say. Uh, it's a great film. I mean, it's just a great film. It's heartbreaking. All these movies, I mean, I don't own them because I don't like them for the most part. Didn't watch this one yet, but I love Howard Hawk. So Only Handle Cut Wings, of course, with Gene Arthur and Cary Grant. That's a fucking great combination. So I can watch that eventually. Gilda. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. I like this movie. Um, but the performance of Put the Blame on Mame is just one of the most memorable things ever. And I love the pink on the packaging a lot. I think it looks really cool. It stands out. And then another Preston Sturge is from the final one of the Criterion Collection, The Palm Beach Story. Which is... I, God, I don't even remember what this looked like. I love this movie. I love Preston Sturge. I still have a few more of his films that I own that I have to watch. But, oh, shit, I fucked up. Hold on. But what I've seen of them... Dead airspace... The ones I've seen are great. Is there a piece of plastic still stuck on this? There is. Okay, they got rid of that. This is not the best surface to be doing this. These things are fucking sliding everywhere. Anyway, what should we do next? Oh, God, there's there's a lot more left. Okay, I'm just gonna have to grab, because this is gonna fall. I, this is not as well organized as I thought it was gonna be. Oh, these are more of the modern... Well, modern in a way but anyway let's just do these moonstruck um 
so when this one got announced, the night before this got announced, so the 14th, right? They got announced on the 15th, I think. Um, I was thinking to myself that Moonstruck should be in the Criterion Collection. Like, literally the night before, and the next day I checked my phone, and it's there. That was some good-ass fucking timing. This is just a great movie. I remember my my uh, parents talked about how good it was, and I thought it was going to be shit. Because I'm like, why? You, <laughs> what? I don't know. Is it like my big fat Greek wedding? I don't want to watch that. But, no, I, I do like Michael Constantine in that movie a lot. Um, but, no, this was phenomenal. So, yeah, it was great. Fucking Olympia Dukakis and Vincent Garnania are just... But, you know, Cher and Nicholas Cage, they're fine. I don't know. They're better than the fucking two from my Big Fat Greek Wedding. Uh, Punch Drunk Love. That's a really, really good one. The Graduate. These are definitely... Those three were definitely more modern. Like, after the 50s movies, which I don't own a lot of. Not in Criterion, anyway. The Graduate. That's another really good one. The Kid. Charlie Chaplin. I remember I saw this in film class. In high school. 8,000 years ago. Uh, it's a mad, mad, mad... Blah. It's a mad, 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 mad world. I haven't watched that one yet. I have to eventually. Okay. I'm like, focus on the packaging. City Lights. Another Charlie Chaplin film. Obviously, Charlie Chaplin's quality. I've never seen Rules of the Game. And I also brought Grand Illusion recently, so I have to watch the run the two Renoir classics. I'm excited about those. Because they get ranked as, like, the fucking five best movies ever made or something. What the fuck? Oh, my God. The fucking camera just shut off. What the fuck? Anyway, The Silence of the Lambs. Um, I have to watch this one again. I didn't like it the first time I saw it. But I thought, you know what? Let me get the Criterion and try to give it another watch. I fucked up with the stupid fucking camera. I guess the whole cursing thing is just, you know. Look, I'm trying to move these things. Oh, my God. Like, dead air. I don't want us to have dead air. Hold on. Like, nothing on the screen. Let's see. The most unprofessional of YouTube channels. God, there's still a lot more left. Okay. I own, like, a way too many Criterions. Well, I guess there's never enough Criterions. Not if they're great movies. There's not enough. How am I gonna do this? Well, this shit is falling. Okay. We'll do these next, and then we'll do these after that. Ah, uh, we'll just do these next. Whatever. Okay. God, I've never shot a video like this before. Anyway... Whoa, The Incredible Shrinking Man. That's another one. That Actually, no, I hate this movie. No, I don't hate it. It's it's pretty good. It's whatever. It did, didn't hold up with the second watch at all. Haven't seen this one yet. Hi, Sierra. I want to, of course, because it's Bogey. This is the one that made him big, Bogey. Made him a star. And then, of course, he did the Maltese Falcon the same year. Oh, one of the best ever. Bringing Up Baby. Howard Hawks. Classic. Cary Grant, of course, my favorite. Okay, another one of them sci-fi genres. Um, movie was fine. It's fine. It, you know, has its moments. It's pretty good. The colors are really cool. But, you know, not really my thing. Even though I, I was glad I watched this When this came out, people were fucking snatching this up. So I, I got it mainly for that reason, too. I wanted to see why everybody was going nuts over it. Destry Rides again. This one was pretty good. And, of course, James Stewart is just fucking phenomenal. And uh, Marlon Dietrich. This one's pretty good. Um, let me sit back and do this. It's a pretty good film. Yeah, I mean, James M. Stahl did a lot of stuff with Irene Dunn that I still have to see. So, I'm interested about that. This one's good. This one definitely falls, though, in the line of... Kind of like the shit Martin Scorsese likes, where it's, you know... The style over substance. Well, that's, gonna, that's gonna piss some people off. But yeah, the the... Character's good, but it's not super... I don't know. I don't know. This is an interesting one. I like it. I just don't think it's as good as maybe some people make it out to be. Oh, and then fucking Holiday. Holiday is fucking great. Holiday is wonderful, George Q. Corr. All right, so let me move these, and I'll talk about these ones next. They should be flipped, though. <laughs> Why did I do this? I'm gonna have to organize those later. Whatever. Anyway, The Red Shoes. Of course, this just came out on 4K, but I didn't get it. This is just the Blu-ray. Uh, this is another one. <coughs> Besides the um, Boris Lermontov cat. Like, it's got themes. We got it. But I don't I don't know. Besides Lermontov, because of his performance by Anton Waldberg, I don't really pick up on too much of the characters in this. I, I think this is more of just it looks fucking phenomenal. 
and the themes are pretty good. Oh, I do love autumn. See, this is this autumn sonata. I mean, this is all about the characters and the performances. Um, Ingar Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, they're just fucking great. You know, great director, actress, pairing. This is all about those human relationships. And those are my favorite kind of movies. The dramas, the screwball comedies, all those that, that really focus on the human aspect of it. Where it's not it's another piece of plastic. Where it's not a style over substance affair. Alright, these are totally out of fucking order now. I don't know what the fuck I did. I'll have to fix these later. So we'll just do this. F for fake. You know, they're on they're in spine number order on the shelf, so I'll have to fix them later. I haven't seen this one yet, but I want to. Good old Wells. Magnificent Obsession, which um includes the Irene Dunn film in here, the James M. Stall one, so that's exciting. I can't wait to see that. Because that's the Cirque remake. I should put this up here. This is like the most unorganized fucking video. I know I've said that like three times, but still. To Be or Not To Be by Lubitsch. The Ernst. Okay, get up there. Passion of Joan of Arc. First, another one that like is on the five best films ever made. It's unique. It's it's pretty cool. I want to watch it again eventually. It was it's good. It's good. I like the ones that you see at the top of Sight and Sounds. They're good films. They're not bad. They're not gonna put stuff up there that's shit. So they're definitely worth checking out. Okay, this is one of my favorites ever. This is in my top five. I don't think I've gotten to any of my top five. No, because. Three of my top, no, there's only two of my top five films in the Criterion Collection. It's this one and one other. Uh, you know, the ultimate romance, as far as I'm concerned. Great women's film. Just beautifully acted, like an adult fairy tale. <coughs> it's been described as. Oh, All That Heaven Allows, my favorite Sark film. I love that it, it's gorgeous. Like, maybe the most beautiful color film ever made. I mean, it's tough. That in the right shoes. Like, Sleeping Beauty and stuff, but that's animated. It's a little different, but... This Technicolor, gorgeous. Oh, well, I guess technically Sleeping Beauty is also Technicolor, right? Just animated. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, All That Heaven Allows. Great film. Great women's film as well. I just, like, love those fucking movies. And Showboat, which I haven't seen yet, which of course has Irene Dunn in it. That's why I got it. I have to definitely check out more Irene Dunn films. So, excited for that one because I fucking love Irene Dunn. Alright, we'll save these for later. Oh my god, this taking this film with me. What, what is, what is it's like pulling it along? What is happening? Anyway, this is the... We're almost done. Okay. A Matter of Life and Death. Pal and Pressburger, another visually gorgeous film. A love story, so I like that. Now, Voyager... Another classic. Probably my favorite Betty Davis movie. It's tough. It's between this one and Baby Jane. I do love Baby Jane. That's a really good one. Okay. The Heiress. I don't know what other William Wyler films are in the Criterion Collection. I think this might be the only one, but I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I think it is. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I always thought Best Years of Our Lives maybe should be in there. or And then Dodsworth, which is one of my all-time like, five favorite films, but I don't fucking know. Whatever. Detour. Uh, this one and Gun Crazy are those low-budget films. Low-budget Poverty. Not Poverty Raw, I don't think. but Maybe they were Poverty Raw, but they were really low-budget noirs or crime films back in the day. And they're just great. It's another one of those. doesn't matter the budget. If you have a good story to tell, you're, you're set. 40 Guns. I always think about that with this, this film, Hollywood Mortuary. It's like the visually one of the most cheap looking films you'll ever see in your life, but the story is pretty clever. I like it. It's fun. Uh, I think Ron Ford directed that. That is one of those movies where it's like it looks like it was a snuff film. And anyway, 40 Guns with Robert Stanley. That was pretty good. Stam Sammy Fuller. And then of course the classic, Some Like It Hot. Billy Wilder, which I don't think is the best global comedy at all, but it is the most iconic one. And, you know, it's an homage, basically, to that, which is kind of crazy to think that the 59 film is an homage to other stuff. Anyway, this is my favorite film of all time. We'll get to um, another copy of it later. I've sealed. This is the only other film in the collection, that the Criterion Collection, that's in my top five. Uh, you know, it's perfect. Cary Grant, Irene Dunn, Leo McCary. I mean, it's a fucking, you know, masters, all of them. At work, Asta from the Thin Man movies. I think it's Mr. Smith in this movie. I think the dog's name was Skippy. I don't even know. 
Anyway, this has a uh, book in here, a little essay by Molly Haskell. It's as good as it gets. That's great fucking artwork. God, she's so, oh my God. She's so perfect. All right, stop, stop. Fucking fan, fanboying over a fucking actress that was born in like 1898. Anyway, Mildred Pierce, another one. A uh, classic film, Michael Curtiz, who did Casablanca. This is a fuck ton better than Casablanca, but whatever. And then, of course, His Girl Friday, which is a movie that I wish I liked more than I did. But it is Howard Hawks, so I don't hate it. I have to watch it again. I mean, it's got Cary Grant in it, too. It's just, I don't know. I don't think it's as good as Bringing a Baby. I have to definitely watch this one again. This has both films in it, like the, the original one, too, on um, the front page. So that's really cool. It's got a whole newspaper in here as well. That's a really good fucking gimmick. It's, they have really good gimmicks. Um, all right, let's do, let's get these ones. These are just my duplicates that I have. That I, I want to give away to somebody, this one. Bring a baby. And then also I have duplicate copies of, of these, which are my two favorite films. Uh, my top five, I mean, so they're definitely going to stay sealed and I'm going to keep them. Like, if any more of my top five films get into the Criterion Collection, they're definitely going to stay sealed as well. I just have that. And then I also ended up picking up Citizen Kane on 4K. Because why the hell not? Great presentation, 80th anniversary. How the hell could you go wrong with it? I didn't get to see it in the movie theater, though. I really wish I did. There's a lot of... There's, like, Baby Jane and stuff that's coming out in the movie theater this year in the heat of the night. I'm excited for this year. Anyway, these are the ones that are in, like, the digi packs. Sweet Smell Success, which I didn't like that much when I first saw it, but I definitely have to see it again. Uh, it's almost been a year since I watched it for the first time. I have to watch it one more time. I mean, it's good, obviously. Again, none of these films are bad films. They're just not. It's just how much I like them. The Magnificent Ambersons. All About Eve, which is not a film I expected to be in this collection. I just think it's too popular for a movie, but I'm glad they did it. Well, it's not popular like A Rear Window or something, but it's still... I just did not think they were going to put this film in there. And I just think Betty Davis is fucking phenomenal. I think that's her best performance, probably. Even though it's not my favorite film. The Furies, which I gave away my DVD copy of because this is the Blu-ray. I had the DVD and then, like, of course, right after I got the DVD, they fucking renounced the Blu-ray. And then Red River. This is Blu-ray, right? Yeah, Red River. Howard Hawks, John Wayne. So, good stuff. So, those are all my criterions. Obviously, the ones that are... In se is sealed, Ugh, in sealed, are sealed. Obviously, I have 23 more that are <coughs> opened up. I'm not gonna get those again and keep them sealed. It's just not worth it. I'm just, I'm just not doing that. I've done that enough already. I, you know, I mean, I collect Criterions and physical media and Maleficent and stuff. So there'll be more Criterions, you know, coming up. There's one uh, James Stewart film. Flight of the Phoenix, there's Love Boat, not Love Boat, oh my god, Love Boat, the fucking, <laughs> no, not Love Boat, uh, Love Affair, the Leo McCary film, Love Affair, so there's that coming out, there's some good stuff coming out, and there's my, well, I'm not gonna do a review on that statue, even though, yeah, so, I wanted to show that, but I'm not gonna make a video, that was really expensive, anyway, that's my Criterion Collection, it looks like a mess, thanks for watching, and I will see you when we all see if Vertigo gets the fucking boot from the top of the spot um i think it should probably stay there but who the hell cares because you know like peter bogdanovich said that stuff is pointless i miss you you're fucking great you're fucking awesome um yeah so anyway cinema old ass cinema no like peter said bogdanovich said there's no old films just films you haven't seen yet thanks for watching bye